intermittent fasting was one of the most popular diet trends in the year 2020. But what I've noticed over the past few months is that many of the health and longevity experts are starting to turn their backs against intermittent fasting and some of them are even completely against it. So in this video we're going to take a look at why has intermittent fasting lost some of its popularity and whether or not it is actually something that is bad for you. It's showtime. I think there are three main reasons why people have turned their back against intermittent fasting. We're going to go through all of them in this video but reason number one is going to be that it has like some negative effect on your longevity and health. Number two is that it's not superior to calorie restriction and therefore it's kind of pointless. And number three is that it's inferior for muscle growth and can actually lead to muscle loss. Like I said, we'll go through all of these points one by one. So the first reason has to do with that uh, intermittent fasting may have like some actual negative side effects for your longevity. And based on like some epidemiology studies, association studies, food questionnaire studies, they say that uh, it actually may increase the risk of all cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. And this study that we talked about in one of my previous videos, they found that uh, having like one meal a day, of course, in this study, actually, they didn't eat one meal a day. They had 2.8 snacks on average, in addition to that one meal. So they actually eat like three to four times a day. Long story short is that in this study, the people who did eat one meal a day also had a lot of the unhealthy lifestyle. Like they were much bigger smokers. They drank more alcohol. They had the unhealthiest diet. They had the lowest education and the lowest income generally. What I didn't mention in the original video was that yes, they did control for these uh, factors in the analysis but when they actually excluded the participants with cardiovascular disease or cancer at baseline, they found that there was no statistically significant effect. So the results were statistically insignificant. So if you exclude the people who had baseline cardiovascular disease and cancer, then they found no difference in that. You son of a and this is one study we have to actually look at the totality of evidence. So another like later 2022 uh, meta-analysis found that time-restricted eating actually has beneficial effects on blood pressure. And in another short-term clinical trial actually, which is a lot more controlled than an epidemiology that <laughs> takes place over the course of 10 years, then they, they found that uh, eight weeks of time-restricted eating, 16 and 8, does improve a lot of the like risk factors of cardiovascular disease. Our results suggest that an intermittent fasting program in which all calories are consumed in an eight hour window each day in conjunction with resistance training. So this is a healthy lifestyle activity that of course contributes to a lot of the results, uh, but uh, it does could improve some health related biomarkers, decrease fat mass and maintain muscle mass in resistant trained males. So this kind of covers two points that many people are talking about. The time restricted eating did result in improvements in the biomarkers and it also was able to maintain muscle mass and decrease fat mass. Of course, a lot of the health results, the improved biomarkers and things like that, reduced cardiovascular disease risk factors, a lot of those things are mediated by weight loss and calorie restriction. So like in order to lose weight, yes, you do need to be in a calorie restriction. And a lot of the health benefits that people see in intermittent fasting are mediated by the calorie deficit and eating less calories. So if you just skip meals, you tell people to eat within eight hours, then in most cases, they're just going to under eat calories. And this is the second point that many people uh, refer to that uh, time restricted eating and intermittent fasting isn't superior to calorie restriction. And a lot of the health benefits of that are mediated by calorie restriction, which is true. So in this trial, they found that it didn't matter in what time window they did eat. They ate the same amount of calories and they found that the weight loss was pretty much identical for both groups. So if you eat the same amount of calories, you eat either six meals a day or two meals a day, but if the calories are the same, then it doesn't really determine or it doesn't change how much weight or fat are you going to lose. So does this mean that intermittent fasting isn't effective for weight loss? Of course it doesn't. <laughs> like intermittent fasting has been shown to be effective for weight loss and in some cases be a possible alternative to this calorie restriction. But it only works if you stay in a calorie restriction. So the key here is that intermittent fasting helps you to adhere to a calorie deficit. And this is actually very individually based. Some people prefer to eat small meals spread throughout the entire day and that helps them to lose weight. Other people find it more easier to eat larger meals and less frequently. So time restricted eating and intermittent fasting is primarily a diet adherence tool that you need to know how to use. If you don't use it, you lose it. And a third and final reason why people are against intermittent fasting has to do with the idea of muscle mass and muscle preservation. So the idea is that because you are eating in a smaller time frame, you're not able to build that much muscle. 
I personally have been doing intermittent fasting for the last 10 years. I've never had any health issues with it. And my physical performance has also been increasing progressively over this entire time. Now, I'm not a professional athlete and I'm not like an elite level strength athlete or a power lift or anything, but my strength metrics are in the advanced range. Now, the thing with protein is that if you just eat all of your daily protein in one sitting, you're not really maximizing the benefits for building muscle. Research suggests that protein synthesis peaks after you consume around 30 to 40 grams of protein in one sitting. And if you want to fully maximize muscle growth benefits, then you need to spread your protein out into several meals. So, for example, eating four meals with 30 grams of protein will result in more protein synthesis and thus muscle growth than eating one meal with 120 grams of protein in one meal as long as the calories and the training is the same. And this is the reason why I do include the second protein feeding into my day. So usually I eat like one meal a day, but then I have to ha add the protein shake in there just because I could stimulate protein synthesis and uh, s still see like the benefits of muscle growth. Yes, it is slower than me eating four meals a day, but like I said, I don't have low muscle mass. I'm already at the top of my like natural limit of how much muscle it would be best for like longevity purposes. Of course, if I want to be like a power lifter or bodybuilder, then yeah, I could add a bit more muscle mass. But for me, my goals, my longevity goals, my BMI is around 26. Like I want to stay around 25, 26, maybe 27 at most of my BMI. This approach may not be the best for all ages. If you're at the age of 50 or 60, then naturally you see a decrease in testosterone levels and you also see some aspects of anabolic resistance that makes it harder for you to build muscle tissue. So in that age, yes, it makes sense to maybe eat three or four meals a day or three or four protein feedings. But in my age, at the age of uh, 20 and 30, then it's not an issue at all. Chill out. But again, this is my experience and my opinion. Let's look at what the studies say. So uh, January 22, intermittent fasting and continuous energy restriction result in similar changes in body composition and muscle strength when combined with a 12-week resistance training program. So in this study, they found that uh, both intermittent fasting and regular continuous energy restriction, and this is actually even the 5-2 intermittent fasting schedule, so that is that you do actually ADF of alternative fasting, which is completely different from time-restricted eating, even this type of fasting was found to have similar improvements in body composition and muscle quality and strength compared to regular calorie restriction. And a key word here is that they did resistance training. If you don't lift weights and if you under eat protein, then yes, you will lose muscle even if you're doing calorie restriction or intermittent fasting. It doesn't matter. If you give your body the signal that it needs to maintain the muscle tissue and you give itself enough protein, then you will maintain the muscle strength and muscle tissue as well and you can even build it. But if you're an individual who doesn't train at all, then yes, your body will get rid of the muscle tissue because it doesn't need it. Training is the biggest stimulus, the biggest like signal for your body that it needs to have the muscle tissue and giving it the protein is the building block that enables you to build it. A 2020 systematic review of human studies on intermittent fasting combined with resistance training found that among eight studies, lean body mass was generally maintained when they did intermittent fasting. But one study reported a significant increase in lean body mass. Body fat mass or percentage was significantly reduced in five of eight studies. So the conclusion of this review was that intermittent fasting paired with resistance training generally maintains lean body mass and can also promote fat loss. And a 2021 meta-analysis of intermittent fasting plus resistance training found potentially beneficial effects of intermittent fasting in combination with resistance training for reducing body mass and body fat relative to non intermittent fasting control diets with similar preservation of fat-free mass. So uh, the intermittent fasting combined with resistance training finds that it maintains you know similar amounts of lean tissue so you don't lose more muscle tissue when you are doing intermittent fasting combined with resistance training and ensuring that you get like adequate protein intakes. So yes intermittent fasting isn't a superior strategy to building muscle tissue compared to the regular bodybuilder diet. But it doesn't mean that you lose more muscle tissue compared to a regular calorie restricted diet. If you're in a calorie deficit, you will always lose a little bit of muscle tissue because your body is more catabolic than it is anabolic. That's going to happen on the calorie restricted diet without time restricted eating and it will happen on the time restricted eating as well. I understand that many of the people who are, let's say, older may have a harder time to achieve that. But if you're in your 20s, 30s and 40s, then you really don't have anything to worry about that. Once you're in your 50s and 60s, yes, may you want to implement some more, like uh, more, more frequent feedings of protein. But in your 20s and 40s, the main goal is to maintain and build strength and not get obese and not get diabetes. And if intermittent fasting and skipping meals helps you to adhere to a calorie deficit, helps you to stick to your diet, 
then I think this is actually a net positive. You just have to figure out whether or not it is wor something that works for you. Just know that it doesn't work through magic. It works through calorie restriction and it works through like adherence to the diet and whether or not it is suitable for you, you just have to figure it out. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.